All right, so we're starting with theoretical yield today. Theoretical yield is the maximum amount of product that can be produced under perfect conditions, the calculated amount of product. We're getting ready to do a lab next Monday. We start the lab on Monday. We finish the lab up on Wednesday. Okay, you're going to go back there. You're going to be mixing a couple of chemicals together, and you're going to have a chemical reaction occur. That chemical reaction is going to produce a certain amount of product. And your whole goal after that product's been produced is to mass that product. At some point, though, you're going to screw up. Okay? Whether it's pouring it from the beaker into the filter paper or stirring it too much and getting some on the end of your stirring rod, somewhere along the line, you're going to lose a little bit of your product. Yes? Okay? It's inevitable. It's going to happen. Even, even if you are the best chemistry student I've ever seen, you still lose a little bit of product in the beaker, in the filter paper, in the funnel, on the stirring rod, so on and so forth. So, what you're going to end up with when you take your piece of product over to the balance at the very end of the day is a mass. And we call that number your actual yield. The number that you got after doing the experiment in lab. Now what we're able to do is we're able to calculate what's called the theoretical yield. And that is the best day ever in chemistry, right? Okay, you captured every last atom or every last compound of that product into that piece of filter paper. You masked it, and look at you. You got 100% of your product there that you expected to get, yes? Okay, does that ever happen in chem lab? No, you always lose something somewhere. So the theoretical yield is what we would like to get in a perfect world, ideal circumstances, the best day of chemistry ever, right? Any questions about that? All right, so let's go ahead and do two examples of this. Example number one, we're going to take a solution of silver nitrate, mix it with a solution of magnesium chloride, and we're going to produce a solid, a precipitate, silver chloride, and have aqueous magnesium nitrate left in our solution. What I'd like you to do after you copy down this sentence is I'd like you to write a balanced chemical equation for this. And I'll give you a couple moments to do that. All right, so our first compound, silver and nitrate. We know silver's formula is Ag. Okay, and what charge does silver get always? Plus one. If we don't know where to find that, where can we look? Periodic table, right? Okay, any element, if you need to know its charge, you can look on the periodic table and find that out. Nitrate, that's one of those kinds of things that sounds like it should be on the what? Yeah, the common ion sheet. So you go there, you see nitrate is NO3, and it has a negative 1 charge. Are my charges equal and opposite there? Yes, they are. So I can go ahead and write them together in a 1 to 1 ratio, AgNO3. All right, our second compound, magnesium chloride. Magnesium's charge is what? 2 positive. Chlorine's charge, when it enters into an ionic bond, always gets what charge? Minus 1. Okay. Are those charges equal and opposite? No. What do I need more of? A chlorine. So I'm going to have MgCl2. Yes? Okay. So now we're ready to go ahead and write our first product. Our first product is silver chloride. So we're going to have the Ag plus and the Cl minus. Basically, these two are going to combine together. Are, are they balanced? Do they make a neutral compound with just one of each? Yes. Okay. So we have AgCl there. And then our last compound, we're going to take the magnesium and combine it together with the nitrate. Are those equal and opposite? No. What do I need more of? The nitrate. So I'm going to write MgNO3. And what do I have to do with the NO3? Yeah, put it in parentheses and write a 2 outside. Okay, what jumps out to you that needs to be balanced right away? The nitrates, the nitrates and the, the chlorides. We've got two chlorides here, so I'm going to put a coefficient of 2 out front there. That balances my chlorines. Now what did I just throw off? The silver. So now I'm going to go back here, put a 2 in front of my silver, and now, not only did I balance my silver, but I also balanced my nitrates. Oxygens, nitrogens, either way you look at it. 
If you are not confident in doing this process right here, when do I have to see you? I gotta see you in access, okay? Then we're gonna be doing this over and over and over again the next couple of months. You've got to be comfortable doing that stuff. All right, so our new part of material, the theoretical yield. We're gonna go ahead and take this balanced chemical equation and give you an amount of silver nitrate to start with and figure out based on that amount of silver nitrate that you start with, how much silver chloride can be produced. I'll give you a moment to write down the problem and then we'll do it. So, first thing you want to identify, do we see the phrase STP anywhere in the problem? No. Yet we see a milliliters, which we know at this point is a volume measurement, yes? So, if we're dealing with a volume, yet we don't have the phrase STP, standard temperature and pressure, can we be dealing with the volume of a gas, the top part of the mole map? No. So we have to look elsewhere. Where else are we going to look? Where, the bottom, yeah, volume of a solution. Now that volume of a solution is measured in what? Moles per liter is the molarity. That's this number right here. Okay. Yeah, volume of a solution in liters. Wow, that's a mess. So we have a molarity that's given to us in the problem as well, and that capital M is abbreviated moles per liter. Okay. So, back to my original question. Volume of a solution is measured in liters. We have milliliters here. So the very first thing I have to do before I even set up my monorail is I got to convert milliliters to liters, yes? Okay. I'm showing this just for everyone's benefit. At this point, I'm assuming that you can go ahead and do this conversion on your own in your calculator. This is not something you have to show me, as long as you're doing it right. All right. So that's our starting point. Liters of AgNO3. Again, just to be clear, let's write our endpoint. What are we trying to get to? Silver chloride in grams. So we're going to try and finish with grams of silver chloride. So first step, we're at the bottom of the mole map. We've got to move into the center of the mole map. So we're going to do what operation? Multiply, Multiply by the molarity. So we're going to take that 1.00 moles per liter and put the number in the top part of the monorail so that liters and liters cancel out. Now we're at moles of A. We're ready to go to moles of B. Remember our generic from last class. So we want to use the balanced chemical equation we just wrote to figure out what the molar ratio is. We're in AgNO3 and we want to get to AgCl. So we're going to put two moles of AgNO3 at the bottom and two moles of AgCl at the top. Last step, we now need to go from moles of AgCl to what? Grams. So we're going to figure out a molecular mass for AgCl. One silver, one chlorine added together, and we get what? 143.321 grams per mole. We got a couple people that agree with her math? Yes? Excellent. Okay. So we go ahead and do the math for the overall monorail. We double check our units. Moles and moles and moles all cancel out. So we end up with just a unit of grams, which is what we're looking for. And what do we get mathematically here? S 
Absolutely, yeah. We've got four sig figs in this first number here, three sig figs in the second number, six in the final number. So we should have just three sig figs, 71.7. .7. And that's our answer. This is our theoretical yield. Okay, best day ever in chemistry. We go ahead and do this experiment with these starting amounts, and we're going to get 71.7 .7 grams of silver chloride as our product. Now, that doesn't happen, right? Okay. So the next calculation we want to look at is how to calculate our percent yield. Okay. Percent yield is defined as the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100. Quickly define these two terms again so we're clear on them. Theoretical yield is your calculated answer. What we just calculated in the previous problem, yes? The actual yield is going to be your lab results. Questions? So let's practice it then. Using the previous problem, if 65.0 grams of silver chloride was produced in lab, what is the percent yield? So the number given in this problem we define as our actual yield, and our theoretical yield is from the previous step. We take the two numbers and divide them by one another. 65.0 grams divided by our answer from the previous step, 71.7 .7 times 100. Ninety point seven we got from a couple of people here. Questions about this process? All right, so our last example here, we're going to take solid phosphorus and react it with oxygen gas to form diphosphorus pentoxide. Phosphorus is what symbol? P. Okay. Oxygen gas is O2 because it's what? Brinkelhoff, yeah. Okay. All right, we got to talk about Brinkelhoff. All right, so Dr. Brinkelhoff is the abbreviation for all the diatomic elements there. Our product here is going to be diphosphorus, which is how many phosphorus? Two and pentoxide is five there. Now, if we want to go ahead and balance this, hey, you look and you say phosphorus is where to start. It's actually a little bit easier if you start with the oxygens. You got five oxygens on this side, and when you look at this side, you see the oxygens can only go up in even numbers. Two, four, six, eight. You're never going to get five. So that tells you right off the bat, what do you need to do over here? Yeah, make it a two. Okay, that gives you ten oxygens on this side, so you put a coefficient of five out front, and then two, and two times two phosphorus, so a four phosphorus there. Questions on that? Everybody good? Okay, there's our problem we're going to do. So, 14 liters of oxygen gas at STP. Ding, 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 right? Bells go off as soon as we see that. We know where we're starting on the mole map. Where, we are, where are we on the mole map? The top part. Okay, so we're going to take the 14.0 liters of O2 and start at the top of the mole map which says that we're going to divide by 22.4 liters per mole. 
Now, we're trying to get the diphosphorus pentoxide in grams, P2O5 there. That's our end result. So again, where we're starting, where we're trying to get to, and our first step there. Okay, we know that's set up right because the leaders cancel each other out. Now we're ready to do our next step. We need to do a mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation. What element or compound has to go in the bottom? Oxygen, O2. So we take its coefficient, 5 moles of O2, put it down below. Then what has to go up above is what we're trying to get to, the P2O5. We have 2 moles of P2O5. What's our last step? Well, we've got to multiply by the molecular mass of P2O5. 141.945 grams per mole. Okay, the question is, why does this go on top? We want moles right here to cancel out with moles right here. Okay, that's why we put the number and grams on top. We want to multiply by those. And then our last two units to cancel out are moles and moles. So we're left with just grams as our unit, which is what we want. Sig fig wise, how many should we have in our answer? Three. Okay, from either the 14.0 or the 22.4. What do we get mathematically here? Yeah, 35.5 grams there. You want to check your math? Okay. Other questions? Okay, last problem of the day here. Whoops. Okay. If 30.0 grams of diphosphorus pentoxide were actually produced, what is the percent yield? So from the previous problem right here, this is our the theoretical yield. Then we identify this number given in this problem as our actual yield. So we're going to take the two and divide them. Okay, two people give me the same answer, that's always good. We got one more person, same thing, good, excellent. The actual yield will be given to you in the problem, or it's from your lab results. Other questions? All right, excellent.